this is such an important conversation to have for young people who mm -hmm. are transitioning from school yeah. to another phase in life. As we grow, we're growing into responsibility. Mm. Then we get to a point where we are 100% responsible, responsible for our lives. Yes. These relationships can be very confusing. Mm. You've been single, self-contained, we say. <laughs> One yes. person, you eat commando, you're good to go. So the moment you get another person in, they have their own emotional setup. So how are you going to manage when someone says, you've hurt my feelings? Let's talk about what conversations I should be having. Mm -hmm. How do I check my readiness? Now, every time we talk about difficulties, people go like, don't scare us. But you know, every level of growth is yes, different. Some challenges. You know, key is who speaks into your life yeah. at that point. Yeah. A new level requires a new you. A new you. Hello and welcome back to Reality Check. I hope you have subscribed to our channel. Welcome to this Reality Check community where we care for hearts and minds with healing conversations, taking care of your mental well, uh, well-being and your mental health by, you know, having conversations in the areas of marriage, uh, relationships, parenting, and just life in general, because every single day we interact with things that could potentially affect our mental health. And so Dr. Eva Sandai, every single week, come to you with these very pertinent conversations. Today is no different. In fact, this particular conversation was sparked by an email that we received, which I'm going to read shortly. But I just wanted to say welcome to Dr. Ivas, and she is, for those of you that are new, the founder of International Center for Mental Health and Family Care. She's a trained therapist, and she will support you in either one of those areas. But she doesn't work alone. She has a team of trained therapists as well. So if you're struggling, whether it's in your parenting journey, or struggling with a teenager who is giving you a hard time, or maybe your family has experienced a traumatic um, loss, then, you know, finding support with Dr. Evers and her team would be advised. And so we'll usually link our contacts so you can reach out to her and get the help that you need. So without further ado, um, we received an email and I'm going to read it. Then I'll say what we are going to talk about in case it's not that obvious. So this person says, good morning, team reality check. Um, of course, good morning, good afternoon, wherever it is you're watching from. Kudos to the great job you guys are doing. I find your teachings really helpful and educational, although I am not married. I would like you to address as well the issue of courtship in the context of young men and women transitioning from university or currently in the universities to the outside world. How should we approach it? Who should we approach it with? And what shouldn't be done in or out of courting? She, the person says thank you and looking forward to it. So we want to talk about the transition of, um, you know, a university student leaving the university, that semi-protected environment into the real world. So when we're getting into the real world, there's the job, there's, you know, making money for yourself, but then there's also starting a family or a marriage. Um, and so we thought it would be pertinent to have this conversation. Um, with Dr. Eva. So, Doctor, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, maybe for purposes of setting the tone, I think it would be good to know what the difference is between dating and courtship, because I know when we're at the university, you know, we're excited. We're excited about boys. Boys are excited about girls until, like you were saying earlier, in third year, a panic sets in, you know, because we're now going to start demanding a spouse from you, so mm. to speak, or society is going to demand one. Um, I guess what should that look like? Mm. You know, when you're transitioning from dating to now courtship, mm. uh, what are, what are some of the differences you'll begin to see? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, um, thank you, Rachel, and uh, thank you for asking and triggering this conversation. <laughs> yes. I think uh, first of all, Rich, I should I should say that um, this is such an important conversation for um, to have for for young people who mm -hmm. are transitioning from from school yeah. to another phase in life. Mm. And uh, he just rem he or she reminds me. Mm. I think mm. a he or she, mm. whatever, um, reminds me that uh, we at ICFC we started a program. Mm 
to empower young people mm -hmm. um, with relationship skills that mm. help them to transition into this phase of life. Yeah. Because do you know that um, as we grow, every even a little child, mm. little babies, I want us, I want us to start there. Yeah. When a baby is young, mm -hmm. um, sometimes a parent is doing a hundred percent. They are taking their responsibility, yeah. right? You bathe them, you dress them. You, but as they grow, as they celebrate another birthday, they mm. begin to take care of themselves. Care of themselves. Mm. And it is called responsibility. Um, some of us, um, we begin with make your bed, we brush mm. your teeth. But until that time, someone is brushing your teeth, is doing all that. So we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been telling people that as we grow, we're growing into responsibility. Mm. Then we get to a point where we are a hundred percent. We started at zero yes, percent, yes. and then we get to a hundred percent responsible, responsible for our lives. Yes. And so that's what it is. Now, whenever young people are leaving uni and they are going up, mm. then they are getting into a phase where they are going to assume a hundred percent responsibility. True. And it can be scary. Mm. Responsibility is hard. We wish someone else could be responsible could for us, yes. could do it for yeah. us. And so that's why it's very important for us to have these conversations, and I'm glad. Mm. So um, dating or whatever courtship, mm. uh, I won't get into the, the technical definitions, but mm -hmm. the key thing is that people are ready for marriage. marriage. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so these relationships can be confusing. Mm very confusing. Mm. You've been single, you, 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 you're self-contained, we say. <laughs> uh, you, yeah. you have full responsibility yes. over yourself. One yes. person, you eat commando, you're good to go. Mm. And now here you are, you have to get into a partnership yes. with someone to, for life. Mm -hmm. That is so scary. It's a lot. Very, very mm. scary. So it is, um, uh, I don't know whether I'm answering your question, Rachel, we but uh, mm. I'm saying, yes, th that is a phase that that is higher than where you mm. were because you're going to accommodate another person. True. So you need to have the readiness for partnership. Mm. It's much easier to manage one life, although mm -hmm. sometimes we even have a challenge managing one life. This is true. But, uh, mm -hmm. but it's harder when you have to accommodate another life, mm. you know, that you have to move with. That is going to create a dynamic that yeah. requires management. Yeah. So the question is, are you physically ready for that? Mm -hmm. Are you emotionally ready for that? Are you ready to accommodate another person's feelings? Mm -hmm. Or are you still thinking about me, 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 me? Mm -hmm. Because the moment you get into relationships, um, um, hard yeah you know very yeah. hard to manage mm. so the moment you get another person in they have their own emotional setup they have their own emotional structure you have your own so how are you going to move together mm -hmm. how are you going to manage when someone says you've hurt my feelings mm. remember you've been moving alone mm. or reading your books and um, answering exams but now you have another person another saying, human being. I have expectations on you. You shouldn't treat me like that. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I like it when you treat me this way. Like, mm. man, that's too much. Mm. So the, the issue is, are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. Are you morally? Mm. Moral. Mm -hmm. Moral readiness. Mm. Very important. When we, when we get into accommodating another person, mm -hmm. it requires some moral infrastructure mm -hmm. you, you don't just get someone and you just continue doing continue. your own thing yeah. so these are some of the questions that you have financial readiness yes yes are you ready to start a family mm. you don't start a family on the basis of emotions only. Yeah. yeah i feel like i need to have another person in my life mm. um I, I think i'm of age you know i'm of age <laughs> <laughs> that's not um, the thing yeah you see so you have to know that um, I guess my point is it requires some level, higher level mm -hmm. of responsibility. And mm -hmm. that responsibility is what I was breaking down yeah. morally, financially, yeah. um, 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 what else? Physically, mm. 
so many other spiritually yeah. are, are you ready to accommodate another person's thoughts and feelings and all those and perspectives mm -hmm. and, and are you ready for are you ready for that yeah. yeah and i think what we are basically discussing today is a readiness for mm -hmm. the next step you know and um there's there are definitely some differences between when I'm at the university. There will be some similarities, like I'm I'm going to learn how to save, mm -hmm. I'm going to learn how to manage my finances better. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what like what conversations I should be having. Mm -hmm. How do I check my readiness? Mm -hmm. And we can just categorize it into maybe your emotional well-being. And mm -hmm. I know you've kind of touched mm -hmm. on it financially, mm -hmm. um, understanding what your responsibility is actually going to be, both mm -hmm. as a man and as a woman. And as a woman. Yeah. Yes, so it, it all begins with, um, once again, responsibility. What is, mm -hmm. What kind of responsibility is expected at this new level? Mm -hmm. Because all of us can be promoted. All of us can get <laughs> married. Yeah. All of us can start a family. Yeah. It's much easier to start than to sustain it. And so when we when we um, we talk about that readiness, mm. yes, it has to be broken down. Number one, mm. you as an individual. Now, are you ready? Mm. Do you feel you're ready to to have another, another person, person yes. in your life? Right? Some of us um, don't even know ourselves, so mm. let's start there. Self, self awareness, yes. Self awareness, that's the starting point. Mm -hmm. Do I know myself before I say I love you and I want to live with you? <laughs> so those conversations, I need to have conversations with myself mm -hmm. and say, do I know myself? Mm. Do I understand myself? before I bring someone else in. Mm. It sounds complex, but it is very simple. It's just check yourself. What, what, who am I? Mm. Identity. Identity. Mm. What do I stand for? Mm. What, am I, what is my, my, my value system? Because we are all supported by that value system. Mm. And I, I think I've said it here, Rachel, that uh, um, we, 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 our, our marriage or our mm. partnerships or our relationships they are they are informed by our value system. True. Yeah. So that's why like attracts like. Like. Yes. So um, I get people who say, "Why do I end up with with mm, a, with a certain with kind a, of with person?" With a certain kind yes. of person. Yes. And then I need to first check with myself. Mm. Do I know myself? Mm. Do I really know myself? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, who am I? And then what are my values? the values, then I'm going to use them to get the person that mm. I want. Not mm. any person you bump into. You meet someone and you say, oh, I think both of us have finished school. And so therefore, no. Yeah. The, the, your values should lead you to the person mm. you really want to marry. That's true. That's why scripture in, in Amos 3, mm -hmm. 3, says two cannot walk together unless, unless they, they agree. agree. So mm. if you're going to get into a partnership, your values, your agreement is mm. going to be based on your values. Yeah. What do I stand for? And uh, let me let me break it down. I love to break things down mm. for people. <laughs> when we say a value system, this is your standard of right and, and wrong. Mm. Yes. Simple. Yes. So if your standard of right is these things are acceptable. This is um, this is me. Mm -hmm. um, one, two, three, four things. Those are the things I accept. I can never accommodate this and this mm. and this and that. Mm. That should shape the your readiness. Yes, have I found up my my values mm. and have I identified? Mm. So if I'm going to get into conversations around marriage, then the part the people I, I, I relate with, I'm going to be mm. intentional. I'm going to be alert mm -hmm. and awake. Mm. to these issues. I'm going to, when I relate with Rachel, yes. when I meet Rachel and we interact, there are certain things the brain is trying to connect with. Sure. Right. Mm. Because if I have those intentions, then yeah. I'm going to look at that. Mm. But then also, um, key thing, Rachel, mm -hmm. is, uh, is also the, what is my motive? Mm. Yeah, so when I get married, what is informing that? What is informing that? that? Is it because of peer pressure? And uh, um, again, since we are talking about university students, 
um, or students from college or mm. whatever, the, by, you know, first year is okay. Second year, mm, a little bit. If your course is course duration is three years, mm. second year, people begin to get yes, pressure. Yes. <laughs> Man, I don't have a, don't have a boyfriend, boyfriend, a girlfriend. I'm going to finish school, and you know, parents have already maybe even been asking already I know. what's happening. We don't see anyone. You know, so the pressure has begun. So the pressure yeah. begins around second year. Yeah. Third year, people are absolutely messed up. And they're like, oh, mm. oh my God, I'm going into the world and all that. And I just want to speak to that. Yeah. Check your motives. Mm. Um, the, the number one mistake you want to avoid is to marry for the wrong, the wrong reasons. reasons. And I think we have had a whole we conversation did. about wrong reasons. Yes. Because if you marry because everyone has a person, um, if you date, start dating someone for marriage, and and uh, and you're not ready just mm. because your roommate mm. has a girlfriend. You don't know how they got there. Yeah. You don't know their motives. Yeah. You don't know what considerations they've made. You don't know whether they are ready. Mm. So two unready people cannot Recipe make any situation disaster. better. Yeah. So it's very important that someone considers their motives. Mm. Why are you getting married? Are you mm. getting married out of need? Mm. or readiness to start a family or you're being pushed by forces no around you. Yeah. Maybe your parents are asking. We'll have a conversation around um, parents and decisions. And decisions yes. But uh, it's very important for one person to mm. consider mm -hmm. that they are ready and they have a good motive. Mm. They feel they are ready to start a family. They've considered all those aspects. Mm -hmm. They feel they they are ready to, they are ready for exclusivity. Yes, that part, yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. They are not just setting up a family just to continue living mm -hmm. single. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for that? You know? Yeah. Because, uh, um, again, I was having a conversation this morning with some group, and, and I was telling them, um, some people who start family, mm -hmm. just for the public, mm -hmm. because people they are of age, they're asking you guy, what are you up to? Or you and then they get the next available person. They get the next available yes. person, they get back on the shelf and and uh, and, and and they are not ready no. to commit in an exclusive relationship, mm. intimate mm. relationship. Mm. So if you feel you have still have a lot of unfinished business, that's not readiness, the readiness rather. Not at all, yeah. You see? Mm. So unfinished business, you're still trying to see. How are Bagisu? How are <laughs> Banyanko? Banyanko, how are Baganda? Let me testing, see. Eh? If you feel you haven't satisfied your mind mm -hmm. in terms of uh, um, what we call it, because if you're checking, and I'm, I'm not here setting people up to go yeah. and to check out everyone, yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But if you feel you still have some time. Some you still need some time. Yeah. They know what to we're make talking a decision. about. Yes. <laughs> they do. Yes. Yes. They do. And and um, if you feel you're not ready to commit to one person mm. because you you think beautiful ones are yet to be born. You know those are some of the lousy uh, perspectives. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so but that all all that is embedded in mm. readiness because yeah. you see this relationship you're going to get in requires a lot of commitment. Yeah. A lot of commitment, a lot of, uh, um, you know, um, building. Yeah. You have to, go to put all your resources in this place. Mm -hmm. But if your brain still tells you you need a little bit of time to mm. have closure mm -hmm. on a number of things, then you're, then not, you're ready. not ready. Yes. You're not ready. You're not ready. I could also talk about financial readiness, mm -hmm. uh, Rachel, mm -hmm. because... Um, of course, we say finances are not everything, but mm. they are something. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They you are. Know? Mm. Finances are not everything, but they are something. Now, in terms of uh, starting a family, there's going to be financial responsibility. For sure. And so that's, that's a worthwhile conversation to have mm -hmm. um, with ourselves. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, when we are starting, um, 
when you're dating someone or having a meeting with them, don't just mm. sit and say, you look good, oh my God, I can't mm. wait. You also have to figure out how, how the, the whole thing is going to play mm. out financially. How mm -hmm. are you going to start a family? Um, are you lots of responsibility around getting married? Mm. You remember when we were talking about people moving in? Mm -hmm. the, 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 are you just going to, to sneak in? <laughs> Um, and what does, does that mean? mean? You see? Yes. What does that mean? Yeah. And uh, and then how about when you get in? There are now two lives together. Mm. You need mm. uh, more financial um, support. Mm. Uh, how is this going to? Do you have enough resources? Mm -hmm. How about when you get in and you now have a child? Mm. Um, are you ready for that? So there are certain things that have to happen. And those conversations are absolutely important. Yeah. Very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in one of the episodes, we were talking about your sense of commitment mm -hmm. to, you know, a marriage and, you know, a marriage relationship, but also the value of discipline, personal mm -hmm. discipline. And I want you to, to talk about that because I think there's a, a tendency, and I could be wrong, but when you're coming from the university, first of all, when you enter the university, you have this sense of freedom mm. because you are coming from secondary school where you, there were so many rules, regulations, and now you have been thrust into the university where your future is your own. You determine whether you go to class for lectures or not. But now there's an added layer of freedom after the university, mm. which says, now I'm an adult. I can make my own choices. I can spend money the way I want to. I don't have to rely on my parents for pocket money. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for those who eventually find work. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like as young people, we take that freedom mm -hmm. into marriage. And there's a, there's a level of freedom into marriage, mm -hmm. in the marriage space, for sure. But there's also need for restraint and personal discipline and understanding your sense of commitment in the marriage setting. So maybe speak to the value of that and perhaps some tips on how you can build that and renew your mind before you make the step to get married. Of course, uh, Rachel, this is rooted in, in, in how someone, uh, in the motives that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you get into this marriage, this institution, why, why are you getting in? <laughs> <laughs> why why on earth yeah. are you getting into this why don't you keep single mm. you see so before a human being crosses to something else number one there is a level of freedom mm -hmm. but then there is also a level of responsibility mm -hmm. and so that's why we were talking about you're committing to some bigger something motive, bigger mm -hmm. some bigger um, picture and so it's not it's not oh now I'm in here, I want to get this, but I also want to get mm. out. That's not how it works. How it, how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, it reminds me of the, of the conversation we had about partnership. And so let me illustrate this. When you are um, in a business, some people who start a business, you have a business, mm. it's your personal business, you're the only one, and um, there is a level of freedom you have, mm. to be honest with you. Uh, but the moment you say, Rachel, can we partner here? Mm. That is going to create a relationship dynamic. True. That there is going to be an expectation on you by another person. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And partnerships, you cannot have a partnership and then you operate as a sole proprietor. Pro pro proprietor. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. Now, a sole proprietor will get a check, sign it, go mm. to the bank, get money. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Mm. That is independence, freedom, mm. and all that you want to imagine. Mm. But the moment they get a partner in, there is a reason why they went for a partner. Probably they needed more resources, mm -hmm. they felt they needed the company to grow, yeah. or whatever it is. So there is always a reason why we get into a certain partnership. Yeah. Now, when you get another partner in, you can no longer have certain Freedom. Freedoms. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it is actually it is a give and, and take. take. Mm. Because in, in in this we have to know that there is an advantage of mm. having another person in your life. True. So you cannot just take and not give. Give. Mm -hmm. So while there is freedom um, that you think you have forfeited, mm -hmm. there is 
again you have gotten mm. by having another person in there are all manner of benefits and i i have uh, maybe i could uh, say a few things yeah. here yeah. there are benefits of of, of being married mm-hmm. You know, there is growth, mm. there is character development, there is financial um, security. Mm-hmm. Also, it's there. Don't worry about the drama in, in, in with with finances. There, there are so many other benefits. We yeah. are also seeing that married people actually. This is research. Married mm. people live longer. There is longevity. Mm-hmm. So there are so much. There is also the joy and mm. um, the excitement. The I mean. I can never talk mm. about all the benefits mm. of marriage but you cannot get in then Enjoy you only the take benefits, the benefits yes, but no but responsibility. no responsibility and that responsibility requires that you forfeit certain, certain things. things yeah you yeah. see you can't be young and the adult at the same time no not at you all. see so there there are certain freedoms that we give up mm-hmm. in order to gain a higher that's true level of yeah. benefit yeah you see yeah. so I, i i think uh, maybe that that should be it but but you also reminded me about something that uh, i wanted to talk about in mm. terms of motives um i i feel like i want to talk to ladies i've had ladies for instance who say i, I just need a rich man <laughs> Someone to take care of. Someone to take <laughs> care of me. But they've been in school. They are they are studying, and the person probably to take care of them He's is also, also finishing in school. school. Yeah. So sometimes it don't. So that's selfishness. Yeah. Now, yeah. of course, you have to know that if you get into that relationship mm. for someone to take care of you, <laughs> that's some potential disaster yeah. because it uh, it speaks actually to a dangerous. relationship dynamic called mm. dependence mm. and that dependence has never been a good place for relationship right true. in whichever form it manifests yeah. it's ugly and uh, it's also a recipe for for um unhealthy interaction mm. because number one, you cannot depend you can't go in with that motive and then expect to respect sometimes by the way it's a um, <laughs> it's very hard yeah. and so because this partnership should be mutually mm-hmm. r- refreshing mm-hmm. and re-energizing mm-hmm. and but now you get in you you're looking for someone to be taken to, care to of. take care of you yeah. and of course also men get in to look for a woman to take, take care, care of them of so be careful <laughs> about some of those take care roles yeah. because that's dangerous yeah that's really dangerous get into a relationship where you can challenge each other work with each other and mm. that's a healthy relationship both of you are ready to grow together make mistakes mm. grow and all that that's a healthy relationship mm. but not to hook on to someone mm. for your own benefit that's not a good place. So yeah. in terms of uh, of readiness we also have to know that that's something you need to consider. Yeah. Don't don't just sit in one corner looking for for Someone. a man who has money. Yeah. How did they make it? Mm-hmm. And and, and uh, are you are you going to help multiply and it? And what's or? that? <laughs> <laughs> to eat it. Or just sit and be taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I think that's important yeah. to really um, yeah. amplify. I think the other um tool or resource for a smooth transition from university to you know married life would be um mentorship or having someone who has gone ahead of you many years to walk that journey with you. Um maybe speak to how people from the university or young people from the university can then approach or maybe work with someone how do you identify the person to work with but also what is it that you're looking for from them mm-hmm. are you looking for them to help you pick the spouse are you looking for them to help you maybe plan and like organize your life so that when that person comes you are ready i guess also in picking a mentor you need to understand why you're picking a mentor mm. and maybe speak to the value of having a mentor for the transition that's right you you just remind me of i think scripture in uh, Joshua chapter mm. 3 mm-hmm. um where Joshua was speaking to um to the children of Israel and mm. he said where you're going you've not been there before mm. so be sure to follow the ark of the lord and he he was saying um please have someone to follow to guide you to yeah. guide you yeah. um i can never never overemphasize the importance of having guidance mm-hmm. guidance because um we've mentioned here that uh, one of the 
dangerous places in, in the foundation of marriage is for people to think that love is enough. Mm. Love is That's not true. enough. Love, love is not enough. You need to learn skill. Mm -hmm. Love is cushioned by, by skills by skill. for management. Yes. And so, um, and skill, unfortunately, now, of course, we have started some conversations like this. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of resources on the, on, on the internet. Mm. There are people in your lives to look up to and go to them and say, how does this work? How does this work? Yes. How does this work? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, am I ready? Mm. Those conversations are important. What does it take to be ready? How did you do it? How did you do it? And then it? someone yeah. will, go, will tell you yeah. the, the positive and ugly and experiences and say look i i also just uh could talk I learned it. <laughs> <laughs> they just got in and uh, and they i mean they are all these experiences because mm. until now we haven't had opportunities where people are mentored and nurtured and and intentionally guided into relationships mm -hmm. but very important that they do that mm -hmm. Identify someone that mm. you can have conversations with. Mm. Identify someone who you can be vulnerable to. But most importantly, do premarital mm. counseling. We at ICFC we have a um, marriage preparation program mm. where you come in, you go through a seven week, oh. you know, yeah, seven week program session, yeah. session where we have conversations ranging from. Um, why you get, want to get married, mm. discovering yourself, personal uh, personality assessment, yeah. Yeah. are you compatible, and, and all that. And, and after the seven mm. sessions, then people are able to determine whether they are ready, whether, they are ready, whether that's yeah. the right person they yeah. want to marry, whether they are ready. And interestingly, mm. uh, I was just sharing with a couple yesterday that mm. out of the so many couples we've handled, We've got only one couple after going through that mm. that said they they discovered I don't think we are meant for each other. Really? Yeah. But the beauty of it is that people realize, hey, so it's skill. Mm. It's and, not and just I can learn an emotion of yes, love. Yes. So I need to consider skill. Mm -hmm. Skill. Mm -hmm. There are things. There are certain conversations I need to have. Yeah. How you manage. How you get over your traumas, your adversities. Mm. You know things you have stored up in your mm. subconscious mind. How you need to um, heal mm. from certain things um, for the good of, of your relationships. Mm. How we have conversations. For instance, um, we have a session that specifically looks at. Uh, uh, families, mm. what, what, how your family, the family you've grown up into, has informed your perception of marriage. That's a good one. Very, very important That's a conversation. Really good one. Very, very important. Yeah. And so when people go through that, then they get into marriage mm. ready to know that this is a management platform. Yes. This is not yes. some emotional thing. No, no, no. This, no, this no. is a management platform. And uh, I ever said that happiness in marriage. Is, 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 is rooted in how we manage different mm. aspects. It's not some people lucky. There's no luck. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it is management. It's, it is a skill to solve problems, a skill to do teamwork, mm. a skill to communicate, a skill to negotiate, mm. a skill to speak up and communicate your needs, mm. a skill to, to define boundaries. That's what it is. Mm. All this is skill. And those are the conversations mm -hmm. that we have during marriage preparation. Mm. So I guess um, I would say, Rachel, that uh, people need to take advantage of, of all this. Yeah. Now, I've always told people, look, we get into jobs, we get to, to go to work. I was asking someone last night, last mm. time, last week, I was asking them, I said, okay, um, which resources or what information do you use to manage marriage? He said, but marriage, everyone has managed. I said, no, but you see, you need to learn how to manage a relationship. And he said, so I asked him, mm -hmm. he's an engineer. I said, mm -hmm. how long did you take training yes. to be an engineer? Mm -hmm. He said, five years. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, and you still make mistakes, right? Who on earth gets thrown into this institution mm. called marriage? Mm. And there's nothing to talk about other than to love it. Yes. What do you mean? What do you mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, but people have to know that there is a lot of management. Yeah. This is a relationship platform that, that has so much 
dynamic. I mean, mm. it's like, it's, it's an institution. When we say family is an institution, it has all these departments. It That's has true. PR yeah. and communication. You communicate with the outer world. It has mm. um, finances, financial department, finance department. Mm. It has planning. It has all these things in order for you to, to work together. Mm -hmm. Those interpersonal relationships that you have to to manage. Mm. Man, that's a lot of work. That's a lot. So you can't just approach it blindly and you say, love is blind. Mm. <laughs> you're going to wake we'll up manage. and you don't believe <laughs> you which realize you actually in. have sight. That's the thing. So yeah. people need to know. And by the way, we're talking about all this, not to scare anyone, True. but to say that every new level requires mm -hmm. a new you. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, every new level requires a new you. Yeah. You can't bring an old you to a new level. Mm. You're going to crash. So you need to open your mind up to know. It's, I mean, it's like prom promotion, promotion at a place of work. Mm. You get promoted mm. to just keep operating like a little um, volunteer. They like say you're a CEO, you say... Then you remain CEO. a volunteer. You remain in that, yeah. uh, that cover. Mm. No, there's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. So key thing, honestly, is responsibility. Yeah. What is required of me? Yeah. What expectations do people have on me? Mm. What expectations do I have on myself? And so that is very important mm. for, for mm. marriage readiness. I honestly think that there's a lot of preparation which, if we're being honest with ourselves, mm. many of us just landed in marriage. Yeah. We had a semblance of uh, <laughs> preparation. We did some premarital counseling there. You know, spoke to our aunties. We did like bridal shower here and there, and they gave us some advice. I don't even remember half the things I was told in premarital counseling. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, many of us don't understand the things that you're saying that it's a partnership and it requires skill, skill that you can learn over time, but you can't learn what you don't know you're missing, you know, in terms of self awareness, uh, personal development. If you know where the gaps are, like for example, if you know your, your struggle, your weakness is procrastination, be sure that procrastination is going to affect your marriage. You, you, can't, be, you can't be a procrastinator as Eva, so Rachel, and expect that in your marriage you are going to keep time, you're going to meet all your goals. Like, it's, it's, it's foolish thinking. Um, and so I'm really thankful that there are tools like you know, this seven-week program mm -hmm. that you know somebody can sit and discover themselves and say oh by the way i i really struggle with procrastination i need to fix that and everything you're experiencing now you are going to experience in your marriage maybe at an even higher higher level very yeah. important rachel i just forgot something when you mentioned about mentorship mm -hmm. we people have to be very careful who speaks into their lives for marriage True. very very important I've been I've been privileged to speak at bridal showers, mm. and uh, it's very interesting. And, and honestly, I'm not saying anything, mm. but uh, let me say this: <laughs> when you mentioned that there is always a semblance of uh, preparation, you know, some, some bit, incoherent yeah. uh, <laughs> messages. So look, you're going to say, and they've said, "Now uh, cook for the man." Yes, yeah, I yeah. don't know what who informs what the guy is telling you. Uh. So, but then. You go to this bridal shower, mm -hmm. and I've been part of them. Mm. And so they go like, girl, um, this is the 21st century. Mm. Love yourself. I mean, some of the things, by the way, they are problematic. The they, yeah, tell you, yeah. they, they are not implementable. That's true. You yeah. know, they are like high level, nice to hear certain things, <laughs> but, not but, practical. but not practical. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and um, I mean, sometimes I listen in, I'm like, oh, don't lose yourself, don't do, mm. don't do. good ideas, but what do you mean? What do you mean? You know? Yes. So, um, it's okay. Yeah. You can... <laughs> But, you say what you want to say, Dr. Evers. No one is going but, to judge you. But to be honest with yeah. you, half the time we don't have concrete guidance, yeah. clear, mm -hmm. workable, implementable guidance. Yeah. We, we, we also are not prepared for some of the difficulties. Mm -hmm. Now, every time we talk about difficulties, people go like, don't scare us. But you know, every level of growth, it's it difficult. has some challenges. You know, yes. I was talking to, I was, I was doing um, life coaching for leadership, mm. um, one of the CEOs in this country yesterday. And this lady sat in my office and said, yes, mm. leadership is so hard. So hard. Mm. And then I told her, I said, yes, leadership is hard. 
It's absolutely hard mm -hmm. because you're no longer this technical person doing your things and meeting targets. Now you're responsible for all the oh. emotions of people yeah. and all these things. Yeah. It is hard, but it has benefits. That's it has true. benefits of growth. It has benefits, physical, tangible benefits. Mm -hmm. You have a big car, you have a big mm -hmm. thing. We love those, yeah. but we don't want we don't responsibility. Want responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is very important. Now this person comes to me and says, can I be vulnerable to you? struggling mm. I'm struggling tell me what kind of personality I am, am I and we go through this and how am I how do I I lose it very quickly when I was talking I said mm. I lose it lose this and like and that is important so we have to be very careful that we are ready to have that level of vulnerability that's true absolutely important yeah. but key is who speaks into your life yeah. at that point yeah do people excite you and remind you of your rights and don't don't do this. Don't tell Some allow. of them speaking from their past experiences <laughs> yes, yes. or things they don't know or they have. So it's very important that you you use authentic sources of information, and they are there. Mm. Sources of guard, uh, guidance, guidance that is that are really uh, beneficial to you. Mm. Otherwise. Um, it's very easy for all of us to have a, a bit of that, a, a bit, bit of you can't this, touch this, yes, you can't touch yes, that, this one said yes. that, um, you know, um, and I have nothing against singers. Great right, well. showers and singers. And singers. I have nothing. I mean, it's they a have good, their place. Yeah, yeah they have mm. their place. You'll mm. pick something, you'll do all that. Mm. But I'm encouraging that uh, we become more discerning and check whether the kind of guidance you're getting. Mm is helpful or is just setting you up to fighting them yeah. yes <laughs> yes and i think let's let's look for practical advice let's look for practical counseling mm. and guidance mm. for this next phase of your life i think one of the things i would want to emphasize that dr evers has said is that a new level requires a new you a new you don't yeah. expect that the way you behaved at the university the freedoms you had and the, the you know the the way you are just taking life and your time, that you're going to apply the same principles in a marriage setting. That transition needs to be used wisely mm -hmm. um, for preparation to arm yourself with information. I remember, you know, they say information is power, mm -hmm. but there's no challenge that cannot be helped or solved with information. Mm -hmm. So if you have information, that's you are halfway there. You know, so if you have information and good information, then it's going to help you transition in your marriage. When you see something, you'll know. Mm. I remember interacting with this maybe at a session or, or the program with Dr. Evers, or my mentor told me this that when this happens, maybe you should react this way. Now, granted, you're never going to have enough preparation for marriage, but if you have a base, a foundation, I think that that, that should be. Um, a good starting point. What are your parting shots, even as we try and close this conversation? Yes. Yeah, so um, number one mm. is that uh, um, from university transitioning into another season of life, mm -hmm. um, that's normal. Mm. That's normal. It shouldn't get anyone freaked out and worked um, up. And worked up yeah. and it's okay. Um, it's growth. You know, when mm. children, uh, uh, some time back, my daughter said. She's now an adult, and mm. she said, man, adult life is so complicated. <laughs> Mommy, can I be your baby? <laughs> <laughs> we, we all feel like that. Yeah. We wish we could be a baby again. Sure. But you know, adult life, mm. we, cannot, uh, we cannot put it on hold. Yeah. That's number one, and it's normal. Yeah. And if you feel um, it's challenging, it's um, a reminder that you are a normal human being. Mm. Uh, secondly, um, what you just m mentioned, to know that a new level requires a different, a different person, person in you. And so you cannot use um, uh, lower level you to manage higher, higher level, level you. challenges. Mm. You, or you have to change. We all, and it is okay. Mm. Um, there's a concept we call life improvement. Mm. And uh, life improvement um, is, is done in response to new responsibilities, right? right? Yeah. So you need to improve yourself and up yourself for readiness for a new challenge. Yeah. If you're really uh, in the habit of, 
of wishing you could you live could on live. the lower level, yes. most likely you're not growing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not growing. And we all have to grow. Yeah. Who of you would have preferred to be a stunted child? Mm. No one wants that. Yeah. So even in the physical, we want to grow. Mm. Except we get to a point and cut, yes. <laughs> Conversation for another, another time. Another day. But... Uh, <laughs> But we all want to grow. It yeah. feels good to grow. Yeah. It feels good to grow in career. It mm. feels good. So even here, don't get into marriage and you want to, to stagnate. To stay stagnant. No. Yeah. We want to get up higher and it is okay. Mm. Please up yourself. Don't use the old you to manage the new you. Mm. And, uh, and then uh, finally, Rachel, maybe my parting shots will mm. be about please identify resources to help to you. To support you, process. yes. Mm. You're going to need a lot of support for the new level, mm. and it is okay. Yeah. Get them from authentic sources. Mm. Don't use um, an assemblage <laughs> of, uh, of so many scattered things you can never put a finger to. Yeah. And uh, you're saying, what is authentic? What is this one gives you? No, mm. use authentic sources of help mm. that are going to make you ready for the new challenge. Yeah. Very yeah. important. And to specifically, I want to say, use therapy, use marriage, use premarital counseling yeah. services. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Have those conversations you'd rather not have. Yes. And uh, talk about <laughs> them, share your fears, yeah. and let, let a professional help you. Support you. Support you. Yeah. Finally, mm -hmm. this is the last know, final. The first <laughs> Make sure that you discover yourself yeah self-discovery is important for marriage mm. don't get into marriage when you're not so sure of yourself mm -hmm. right do a self-awareness check check who mm. are you mm. before you get another person before you add on you know yeah can you imagine you're still not so sure of yourself and yeah you, you are mr so and so mrs and so then you say you didn't tell me that i'm this <laughs> no. What do you tell yourself? What do you tell yourself? What do you tell yourself? Yeah. So all those are important um, uh, steps to take. Mm. And um, also to know that the level you're getting to is going to require learning. Yes. So don't, even as we talk about readiness, you can never be fully, fully ready. ready. Yeah. You're going yeah. to get there. That level is a training ground for, for, sure. for life management. Yeah. So. For don't sure. freak out yeah thank you dr evers um i i really do hope this has been helpful um, especially in managing the transition from university life to now you are a missus someone or a husband to somebody a mother to someone a father to someone wow. it's a lot of responsibility mm. and unfortunately you know the reason we had the the conversation on wrong reasons for marriage is because so many people are making that step with all the wrong reasons, it is actually shocking that mm. people get married just because he was available, just because he asked, just because, you know, she was nice to him, she smiled, she did the right thing at mm. some right time, and yet you are not aware that there's a whole lifetime ahead of you mm. and a family that you are starting, a generation that you are starting. And so it requires some sort of serious preparation on your part uh, before you make that step. So I really hope this was um, useful to you who has been watching and we do appreciate you. Remember to like and um, comment, share this episode with a friend and of course subscribe to the Reality Check channel. Mm. Until mm. next week, stay well, stay healthy. Mm. We'll be right back with another conversation. Mm. Bye-bye.